Good day, my name is Lisa and I am a third year chemical engineering student at the University of Pretoria. A few weeks ago, I was going through YouTube and I was searching for a video on chemical engineering at six to see if anybody has given guidelines on, you know, how to survive it. Because in third year, you kind of start questioning things. It's a bit late, but you start questioning things. And I realized that there's a gap and nobody's really spoken about their experience. So I was deciding on it and I decided that I'm going to give my experience at the university to all of you beautiful people. So I'm going to start with discussing the first year modules that the chemical engineering students take and then afterwards I might give my opinion on what the experience has been so far and maybe if it gets enough attention I will make a second year um, yearbook basically. So all of the modules I'm getting from our chemical engineering department yearbook which is available online if you want to go through it yourself but I assume that a lot of people are on YouTube, so you might as well watch this. So in your first semester, you have six modules, excluding UPO. UPO is a module that is provided for all first year students, and you can actually finish it within a day if you really wanted to. Um, and then you have Chemistry 171, which is basically basic chemistry, which builds up on the knowledge that you already have in the trick. And you do some practicals, which are pretty cool. I never had practicals at my high school, so it was a first experience for me. And then you have WCW 158, which introduces you to limits and continuities and functions and indefinite integrals. And that was the first time that I also was introduced to integrals because I didn't have ad maths. So it was or AP maths. So it was pretty much a big jump for me when I went from high school to um, first year. But that doesn't mean that there's no hope for someone to do it. Because if I can do it, believe me, you can do it. And then there's MGC 110. So MGC 110 is your drawing module. So if you had EGD in school, then you'd probably feel a bit more comfortable than most students. I know that I struggled seeing most of the things in because you start off with two dimensional drawings and then you do assembly, assembling of drawings and it gets a bit complicated. But if you practice it a lot, you'll get better at seeing it in. And then we have has 110. So that's a module that all the engineering students take as well. And it's basically about history and then you have to write essays on it that we usually had to write essays on it. But I know that the first years, I think, of this year had to do multiple choice. So they actually had to learn all of the content. What we usually had did was we learned the essays and wrote our own essays about that. And then you have FSK 116, which builds up on your knowledge about physics that you've learned in high school. I personally didn't like the module a lot, maybe because I didn't understand the lecture as well. Um, I know some people who had it in the second semester, which had which improved their marks better than mine. Um, but it's fun if you really like physics and get into it. The textbook is really thick, so um, maybe you'll enjoy it. And then we get to CIR 113 which is the module that makes the chemical engineering students different from the other students in first year. So we are actually really lucky to be introduced to chemical engineering in our first year already. Now in high school, we all learned to think a certain way and everybody thinks the same. And CIR just breaks you down and makes you think in different ways. Like, it completely changes the way you think about problems and you might struggle with it because your brain has to rewire itself. You learn about pressure drops and mass balances and all of the fun conversions with units and it's not easy. It's definitely not easy but it is worthwhile to try and understand it and the lecturers are amazing who present it. One thing that I learned is how to ask questions because I think a lot of people struggle to ask questions because they just keep to themselves and they don't want to burden someone but you are paying for the tutors that you get so you might as well use them for the money that you pay. 
So they are really helpful and if you ask them questions, they will help you get through it. Okay, so that's, that's semester one, which is a bit of an adjustment from high school because you have to work a bit harder. I think I underestimated the amount that I had to work, so I didn't do extremely well, but I passed all of my modules with a little bit of stress, but I passed all of them. And then I went on to semester two. So in semester two, you have things that are called prerequisites. Now you'll get to do with this your whole degree long. So basically it means that you can't take a module if you haven't passed another module. Okay, so I'll discuss this later as we go through the modules. So for CIR 1 to 3, you had to get into the exam for CIR 113 and you had to get a final mark of 40. So that means your semester mark and your exam mark together had to be 40. And then you can take CIR 1, 2, 3. Okay. So what I used to do to remind myself of the prerequisites of the modules that I have to pass to be able to do my degree in four years is I used to make like these mind maps of the modules that I'd taken first semester and the ones that need those to actually be able to take these. And um, I used to have big maps of them on my wall to remind myself. It's a bit stress inducing, but at least you know what you need to pass because I have a bursary and I needed to pass it. In f and I had to get my degree in four years, which I mean, next year hopefully is in four years. So that's for CIR 1 to 3. You had to get into the exam and get a final mark of 40 for CIR 113. And uh, for CIR 1 to 3, it was a bit more challenging. It goes on from the mass balances that you learn about in semester to semester one. And then it broadens that idea completely. And looking back at it, it's basically the building stones of chemical engineering that you learn in first year. Because now I do mass balances without even thinking about them. And then you have EBN 1 to 2, which don't have any prerequisites. It's basically your electronic electrical module where you do circuits and series and parallel resistors. It also builds up on the knowledge that you built up in high school. So it just broadens there. Um, a lot of people experience it as difficult. I know I failed my first class test for it, but the more you practice it, the easier it gets. Sometimes I practiced a lot and it just got so easy at a point that I just did it without even thinking about it. And then you have HAS 120, which is not, it's not the same as HAS 110. I know that we had different lecturers for the two um, different modules. So it's the same kind of idea. It's history and you write essays on it. It's a humanities module that is for all the engineering students. And then you have SWK 1 to 2. No, I didn't experience this This is easy. I know a lot of my peers didn't experience this as easy. I think this is the module that for most engineering students in general stands out as it's difficult. Now the prerequisite for SWK 1 to 2 is that you had to pass WTW 158. So obviously looking at that you're going to be, it's a bit math based. You have to use that kind of thought process. And it's a civil engineering module, so you'll have to do with trusses and resulting forces and all of that nice things. And it is a challenging module. It's a very practice-based module. You'll have to sit down and do the tutorials to be able to understand the work. And if you do that, then you'll, you'll really be helped a lot because they tend to do about the same questions in the semester test than what is asked in the tutorials. And then you have WTW164, which leads from WTW158. So to do WTW164, you need to have gotten a final mark of 40 for WTW158 when you wrote the exam. So final mark of 40, once again, you had to get a final mark of 40 with your semester test and your exam together. Then you have Chemistry181, which is a lead on from Chem 171. So you had to pass Chem 171 to take Chem 181. It also has its own uh, practicals that you do in your little white coat. Um, it's a bit more intense than Chem 171 is because now you have an organics part and you have your analytical part, which 
was more focused on in Chem 171. And then from Chem 181, you have chemistry modules in second year, which are more organics based. And basically, you only have chemistry for the first two years of uh, chemical engineering. And that's just what your basis is for the rest of your degree. And then you also have workshop practice at the end of the year, but this is not a module that is given through the university. We went to a separate organization where we learned how to do welding and circuit structuring and soldering. And it was actually really fun. Um, I'm not sure what the whole situation is going to look like next year, but this is what we did and my experience of doing them. Chemical engineering is challenging at most. In first year, you don't experience it as much and you don't really have an idea of what you're going to be doing. But the only advice I could give you is to try and find as much information as possible on this degree before doing it. Yeah, uh, hope it goes well.